Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, I will be breaking into the 10 things that every single solo player needs in Grand Theft Auto Online. Not only to maximize efficiency, but also to survive public lobbies and just make life a lot easier and more fun in the process. So, as always, if you enjoy this type of content, it does take a while to get out. Make sure to click that subscribe button down below. And with that being said, we break into the number 10 position being this in front of us the mobile operations center now we are not focusing on the giant cab in the back in fact we're just going to disconnect that from our vehicle we are here to focus on specifically the mobile operation center cab otherwise the hauler custom or the phantom custom if you don't have the upgraded variant both of them are basically the same it just depends which look you like better now you might be asking well what's so special about this truck it's obviously not going to handle as well brake as well or really do anything better than a sports or super car well here's the deal this truck cab can survive 69 homing missiles yes you heard that right 69 homing missiles i'm pretty sure rockstar picked that number as a joke but uh yeah essentially this thing is virtually indestructible the only way to blow this vehicle up previously was using the unnerfed laser explosive cannon and now there's only one aircraft in the game that features that weapon which is the savage most people don't even use it so because of that the mobile operation center cab is probably the most overpowered vehicle in terms of never being blown up if you ever play in a public lobby you're basically indestructible even better than amani tech cars and it gets better see how the back of this vehicle has no windows well you can still shoot directly behind the cab of this truck which is just really weird but essentially if somebody ever tries to kill you all you need to do is reverse your vehicle towards them shoot them and they literally will never be able to kill you it's kind of busted so yes because of that the moc makes it into the number 10 position it's not an expensive purchase it comes fully armored and it's definitely worth the buy in the number nine position we have the arcade now i'm not here to talk about the arcade's heist or the passive income that it has the specific reason we are talking about the arcade is for the master control terminal this is a massive network of different businesses all displayed on one big screen as you can see we have the nightclub we have the bunker we have all of our motorcycle factories we have vehicle cargo special cargo air freight cargo every single one of these businesses can be managed by simply going on this computer so let's say i want to change my nightclub stock well i can easily do that if i want to promote my club or change my resident dj and raise my popularity a little bit sell my goods i can do that right from this screen then i can make my way over to gun running supplies and because my bunker needs some more supplies there you go i'll purchase some for thirty thousand dollars and then i can go to my coke lock up log into the site resupply the business there you go seventy five thousand dollars and we got supplies on the way over there and then maybe i want to do air freight cargo so i'll go hop onto this site and i'll go source some goods this is incredibly useful it saves so much time instead of having to go to each individual business walk over to the computer on the business purchase the supplies then go back out go to where you were originally going when you can simply log on to one computer and manage multiple businesses now while i don't recommend to use the motorcycle club products i do think using the nightclub the bunker and all of your special cargo air freight cargo from here is very easy to do and it will definitely save you a lot of time Sliding into the number eight position, we have the Kosatka. Now, we're not here to actually talk about the Cayo Perico heist. While that does add to the reason why it makes today's video, I mean, obviously, having a heist that you can do as a solo player doesn't get affected by anybody else. It's incredibly easy to do, and definitely one of the major reasons why you should always buy this property, especially if you're a new player. However, we're here to talk about two different things. First of all, in the back of the Kosatka, we have the Sparrow. We'll actually be talking about the Sparrow later in today's video, but the Kosatka is what you need to actually use the Sparrow. So because of that, you have to buy this property to begin with, and the Sparrow is an absolutely amazing aircraft to use for literally any situation you're ever stuck in. But the other main reason why the Kosatka is here is fast traveling. 
let's say that I want to make my way all the way over to, I don't know, my house over here, my own apartment. Well, to do that, normally I'd have to go get out like a Raiju or something that, you know, can travel across the map really fast, or... I can just simply set my spawn location to Polito Forest, and $2,000 later, I'm going to fast travel right over there. This takes about 20 seconds to do, and that is an incredibly short amount of time, especially if you compare that to how long it would take to just normally get out a different vehicle and then drive all the way over there or fly all the way over there. This is just flat faster. And this is the other reason why the Kosatka is so important. Even if you don't care about spamming the Kyoprico heist, using the Kosatka to make it from point A to point B, I mean, look at that, we're already over here, but just using the Kosatka to make it across the map is incredibly important and it will save you time when grinding for missions. So because of that, this makes it into the number eight position. Making our way over to the hangar, we have a specific aircraft which will arrive in the number seven position, and that is the F-160 Raiju, an absolute behemoth of a jet. Not only does the Raiju look absolutely menacing, it's such a cool aircraft, but it has so many different use cases for it that it has to make it into today's list. First of all, the Raiju has a hover mode, which you can see right here. This hover mode is incredibly useful, because let's say that there's somebody that you want to kill. Well, you can either pull out your missiles and just, you know, shoot whatever's in front of you. We can see that we absolutely nuked that jet there. Or, you can pull out the explosive MG, and again, this explosive MG is incredibly dangerous. If there's somebody that you need to just delete, well, you just go and they're all dead. So there's two easy ways to just destroy everything. You know, if you're doing a, a public mission, you can just use the homing missiles, blow anything up. And then the other great thing is that the Raiju obviously is a jet. So you turn that VTOL into speed mode. And the Raiju can fly at a top speed of 230 miles per hour, making it the fastest flying aircraft in the game. And you'll also notice it has stealth mode. See those little bomb bays that open at the bottom? Well, you can hide them and now you're in stealth mode. And stealth mode means that you are invisible to everybody on the radar. It's not the most useful thing ever, because, like, come on, who's going to kill you in a Raiju? You're faster than most homing missiles can even fly for the most part, so it's not like you're going to have to worry. But it is still nice that you can get across the map without having to worry about knowing or having people know where you are. And then you can just come out of off the radar, do a quick bombing run, pull out the explosive MGs, and just absolutely annihilate. You can see just how fast this jet is. We were literally almost going faster than the missiles that we shot. So, yeah, the Raiju is absolutely incredible. The fact that you can put it in hover mode and land it wherever you want means it's also incredibly useful to just use. So, yeah, definitely would recommend to pick up the Raiju, but more for the experienced players out there because this is an expensive purchase. It's over $5 million, and yeah, that is quite a hefty purchase price. You also need to own the hangar to upgrade it, so if you're newer to the game, I would definitely recommend to stick to the higher up vehicles in today's video, but I still think the Raiju is absolutely insane. Around me, you will notice that there are quite a few different vehicles, and you might be wondering how the heck one position has so many different cars, and that is because they are all under one category, Amani Tech. I personally believe that all Amani Tech vehicles are amazing. I mean, sure, certain are better than others. You got the Buffalo, which obviously features semi-bulletproof glass, which is really good. However, I think that for the most part, you're not going to really die in any Amani Tech vehicle. The Ocelot Virtue features 10 homing missiles before it blows up, 10 sticky bombs before it blows up. Same for the Obey Ominous EGT. And the Grotty Stinger TTGTO is the fastest Amani Tech vehicle, especially if you put on the HSW upgrades. It's the fastest car in the game, which is kind of insane. You got the uh, NS300R. You've got the Champion, which features, again, semi bulletproof glass. So, you know, they're all pretty good. Like, even the Greenwood, which I would say is one of the worst Amani Tech cars, it's still a four-seater, it's still decently fast, and if you like the design of it, it's not like you're gonna die too often. Thing can still survive 10 homing missiles, and you can't even home on them in the first place. So, I personally believe that any Amani Tech car you buy is going to weather you through just about any situation you need to get through. There's just certain differences between the cars that you personally should figure out what are the most important to you. Do you want speed? Do you want handling? Do you want it to be a supercar, a sports car, a muscle car? Do you want bulletproof glass? These are all things you need to think of. So let me know what you guys think is your favorite Amani Tech car because I'm sure everybody has their own preferences. I personally really like the 300R in terms of uh, looks, but I think the Virtue is probably my favorite.
Making it into the top five, we have the Toreador. This vehicle is just kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to cars. I think this is slightly better than Amani Tech vehicles because of the fact that it actually has self-defense capabilities. Like, sure, you can't put a missile lock on Jammer on the Toreador, but you know what you can do? You can have homing missiles, which will absolutely annihilate anything in their path. And it's not like the Oppressor Mark II or the Deluxo, where you have a limited amount of homing missiles you are able to fire. This car has an infinite supply of homing missiles, which means you can literally just obliterate anything in front of you. There are also Mark II homing missiles, which means if you see a jet in the sky and you get a lock on, chances are, if they're not the best pilot, they are not going to be able to evade these missiles. The Toreador is fast. It features a rocket boost, and it can survive eight homing missiles before being blown up. So it kind of has everything going for it. You'll also notice, for some reason, Rockstar gave the Toreador one of the most ridiculous or cannons, like, in the game. It's not a cannon, it's a machine gun, but, like, for some reason, the machine gun on this vehicle counts as a minigun. So you can see we got this car in front of us, and literally, I can just blow it up with about two to three seconds of shooting at it. It's kind of insane. So, even if you did run out of missiles, which is impossible, you have a machine gun that'll obliterate anybody in front of you as well. The Toreador is kind of insane. Plus, it's a four-seater, and it can go under water because it's a submersible so uh yeah kind of ridiculous definitely worth the purchase price in the number four slot we have the oppressor mark ii this was always going to make today's video and it's going to make really any youtuber's video when it comes to the top grinding or just best vehicles for solo players because i mean the oppressor mark ii has it all first of all it's fast you can see if we use the handbrake the oppressor mark ii can reach a top speed of 129 miles per hour with the speed boost it gets up to a little bit faster of 150 so it's fast you're never gonna have to worry about being slow i mean it goes faster than the average super car not only that but it features missiles now to be fair these missiles are kind of lame they're basically the same missiles you'll find on any jet but they are still very useful for clearing npcs any sort of mission where you need these homing missiles they'll come in handy and they'll get the job done especially because you can hover in the oppressor mark II above any target that you need to shoot so you just aim the missiles and it's incredibly easy to use the other thing that's great about the oppressor mark ii is how easy it is to control and maneuver let's say i want to squeeze underneath the sign i mean i missed it but you can see just how easy it is to like maneuver the oppressor through little gaps and small things you want to do here it's very easy imagine trying to maneuver a helicopter through little billboards and things like this you just couldn't do it and you also can't really die you can see there i can just like kind of drive the oppressor full speed into a wall it doesn't matter you're not going to fall off of it so it's very hard to blow up it does feature flares so if somebody does try to shoot at you at least you have a small brief amount of time before you'll die and you can possibly jump off of the oppressor pull out your parachute and live however oh oh we did get the parachute out okay we're all good but yeah the oppressor it's just a great vehicle to own in general so i would definitely recommend to buy it you'll also see that it doesn't blow up when you jump off of it like a normal aircraft so yeah just kind of a flat dub overall we finally arrive in the top three things that you need to buy. And the first one is the Avenger. This is an aircraft that is not talked about much, but I can tell you for a fact that it is absolutely dangerous. As we can see, underneath my Avenger, there are two different types of weapons. You have a machine gun and you have missiles. And Rockstar recently added this into the game. It allows the Avenger to have self-defense capabilities. And this easily pushed the Avenger over the edge to becoming kind of an overpowered aircraft. You see, the normal problem you have with a lot of aircraft is they're kind of weak. Like an F-160 Raiju takes two missiles and the thing's out of the sky. And even things like the Rogue, after three missiles, it's already smoking and it's gonna blow up after uh, on the fourth. So because of that, it's always a bit tricky to use aircraft because explosive snipers, rail guns, and anybody that really knows what they're doing can take one out very quickly. However, the Avenger is the tank of the skies. First of all, it features homing missiles. So if anybody is causing you trouble, you can easily use these homing missiles and blow whatever up or blow anybody up that's in front of you. The Avenger has a machine gun, but it's kind of useless. You're going to want to stick with the missiles. That already allows the Avenger to be super dangerous. But I should also mention the Avenger can survive 27 homing missiles before being blown up. Yeah, you heard that right. 27 homing missiles. So while you're using this thing, flying at around 170 miles per hour, you're literally indestructible to most people in the sky. And when the Avenger blows up, if you're inside of it, it doesn't even kill you. It just spawns you outside of it and you can parachute down. 
So you basically just can't die while using an Avenger. It's also incredibly useful on its spawning locations because it's obviously a hovercraft, so you can use it really wherever you are. Oh, and you know what I talked about before? Aircraft are really annoying in that they spawn as a personal vehicle. Well, the Avenger is under the service vehicles category. So because of that, you actually don't need to worry at all about the Avenger taking up a personal vehicle slot. You can also put it in autopilot, head into the back of the aircraft, and you don't even need somebody else to fly it. So, I mean, it's just kind of incredible what you can do with the Avenger. You can upgrade personal vehicles inside of the storage bay in the back. You have a mammoth thruster you can have inside as well, so you can just kind of fly around with a little jetpack if you want. And we arrive to the gunner stations. These allow you to be kind of overpowered. In fact, if you have more than one person, the Avenger becomes probably one of the most OP vehicles in the game. But even if you don't have more than one person, let's say that I'm doing a mission. And in this mission, there's like a bunch of people I need to kill below me, right? Well, look at this. This uses an explosive cannon. Basically, I'm shooting tank rounds right now. And, uh... Yeah, it's a little stupid. It's a little stinky. Essentially, if you ever need to kill anybody, you just hop onto the seats in the back, you obliterate everything around you, and then you can just jump out of the Avenger, parachute down, or you can use your thruster here. The best part about the thruster is you can literally go back into your Avenger after you're done. So let's say you've killed a bunch of people. Instead of bringing your Avenger down, you hop down here with your thruster. Boom, you finished a mission. Now all you need to do is head back up to your Avenger and you're done. It's just so easy. The Avenger is such an important purchase. I would highly recommend to get your hands on one. For any of you that watch the channel a lot, you'll know I love the Deluxo. It's just such a good vehicle to purchase. First of all, features homing missiles. And these homing missiles are the Mark II missiles, so if there is somebody causing you trouble, these are not going to miss. I have a video on my channel where I shot at an F-160 Raiju going full speed towards me with these homing missiles, and they will instantly turn around and nuke the Raiju before the person even has the ability to evade it. And because the Raiju doesn't feature flares, there's nothing you can do about it. This is actually kind of insane. I would choose a Deluxo to dogfight any jet or oppressor Mark II over any other air aircraft in the game, maybe only a B-11 Strike Force is the only other thing I'd actually choose. But the Deluxo wins every time against any aircraft. It is absolutely insane. And when you pair that with the fact it's quite fast, driving at 127 miles per hour, the fact that it is incredibly stable and it's got really good handling, oh, and the fact that it can fly, you know, that's kind of insane. It's not the fastest, only flies at around 90 miles per hour, but it still flies. And again, it features homing missiles, which are really, really dangerous. So yeah, the Deluxo is kind of just a jack of all trades when it comes to vehicles. It's always going to be useful and you can also just fly right over the water with it, hop out of your vehicle, complete a water mission, you know, like Lupe's mission where you need to go grab underwater crates. You can use the Deluxo to make those missions way easier. So I love the Deluxo. It's always going to be one of my favorite vehicles in the game. Anybody that uses it and knows how to use it properly knows why I'm putting it so high. People that don't know how to use the Deluxo properly don't know why I'm putting it so high. But it is, trust me, incredible and once you get used to it, it will be one of your favorite vehicles in the game, and that's why it makes it into the number two slot. So what do we have making it into the number one position for today's video? Well, I already talked about it, and I said it was going to make the video, and that is the Sparrow. How do you spawn in the Sparrow? Well, it's incredibly easy. You go to service vehicles, you go to Kosatka, and you press request Sparrow, and look at that. It's right behind me, instantly spawned in. That is how easy it is to spawn in the Sparrow. Every two minutes you can do this, and that makes it just so nice. If it gets blown up, you don't need to call MMI. Instantly get spawned back in your Kosatka, and you can spawn it back out in two minutes after. The Sparrow is one of the fastest flying helicopters in the game at 168 miles per hour. This only puts it slightly behind the weaponized Kanata, but let's be real, the weaponized Kanata is kind of useless, so yeah, the Sparrow takes the cake for the most basically useful helicopter. It's fast. It also features flares, which means if anybody's trying to cause you trouble, you can launch these flares and you're not going to have to worry. You can bail out of your helicopter if you want, or you can just keep shooting the flares. You're not going to have too much of a problem. Obviously, the homing missiles, they're not anything amazing, but it's still nice that you have them, and they will obviously annihilate anything in front of you, making this great for completing basic missions. The Sparrow is also really, really inexpensive for what it is. It's only $1.7 million. The upgrades are super cheap, and you unlock them at level 1. So, the Sparrow is just a great 
steal and buy overall. The fact that you can spawn it in wherever you are, whenever you want, instantly. The fact that it features homing missiles, flares, it's incredibly fast and maneuverable, makes this amazing. Yes, the Oppressor Mark II in certain situations is better, and I'm not going to disagree with that. However, the Oppressor Mark II costs $8 million, which, uh, is a little ridiculous in my opinion. Plus, you need to own the Terabyte. It's upwards of 10 to $12 million to get and fully upgrade the Oppressor Mark II. And sure, you need to own the Kosatka to get the Sparrow, but you're only going to be having the drop around $4 million, plus the Kosatka actually earns you money, unlike the Terabyte. So, I would definitely say the Sparrow is my favorite purchase in the game. It's probably my most used thing in the game in terms of anything I do. So yeah, definitely recommend to buy it. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with today's list. And if you'd like to see more like it, you know what to do. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.